Well, hey, good evening. Paul T. the second with you. Let's take a look at Carolina's 2011 schedule. Give my take on how I think they're going to do this particular season. Opening with James Madison in Chapel Hill, a 3.30 kickoff. If Carolina struggles in this one. It's going to be a long season indeed. But I think the Hills will come out fired up ready to play. So we'll call it one today. Rutgers invades Chapel Hill the following week for a 12.30 kickoff. Rutgers is a little bit of an enigma. I have a feeling they might be slightly better than last year, but certainly nowhere near the level they were a few years ago. So we'll go ahead and take the heels, though. I think it'll be a relatively tight one. You got Virginia coming in the next week, a 3.30 ABC game. Yeah, I figure the heels will probably roll the calves. Now, from there, the schedule does start to get a bit tougher. Trip to Georgia Tech, which has been a house of horrors for Carolina since the Mac Brown era. And I have to say, more than likely, it will be again. So we're going to call that an L, 3-1. You've got East Carolina and Greenville the following week if you're looking for a game which is most likely to end in a riot in the 2011 college football season. This will be it. 8 o'clock in Greenville. They'll be able to pour the fans out of the stadium after that when everybody's going to be so lit up. As for the scoreboard, I think it's going to be lit up quite well as well. And we'll take the heels in a close one. Won't be easy by any stretch of the imagination, though. Next week, Louisville comes to Chapel Hill. I'll talk about a team for which the Tar Heels have definitely regretted scheduling. I think Louisville certainly qualifies for how they just completely hammered the Heels during the bunting era. But Louisville's nowhere near that level now. So Carolina should be favored going into that one. We'll go ahead and take the Heels in a tight one. So that gets them to 5-1. and one. Now next week you got Miami coming to Chapel Hill. That's another matter altogether. Now if Miami finally starts putting it together, and this would be a very difficult one. But, very interesting point. Carolina has never lost Miami in Chapel Hill. Not, it's not a Clemson in basketball situation by any stretch of the imagination, but it does make an interesting point. We'll go ahead and take the heels just for uh, laughs. But as to how that one will certainly play out, as to how any of these will play out, well, all bets are off once the season starts. But, hey, that's half the fun of preseason prognostications. But I digress. Next, a trip to Death Valley for the first time in, I believe, five seasons. Mm, that is a place Carolina typically does not play well. This will probably not be an exception. We'll call it 6-2. Wake Forest comes to Chapel Hill the following week. Poor old Jim Grobe, I don't think he's anywhere close to getting fired. But he's certainly hurting after last year, and I have a feeling the Deeks might be able to eke out a couple more wins, but altogether, I have a feeling the bloom is off the rose a little bit over in Winston-Salem, so you got to figure the heels on that one. And then you got State and Raleigh. Carolina never beat State during the Butch Davis era, and I know Wolfpack Nation will be living off of that for the rest of time and creation. So, Let's see what happens this time around. you got to figure that State, especially because I think State's going to be really good this year. I'm not a world beater by any stretch, but certainly they are making progress over in Raleigh. And, and Tom O'Brien, you got to give the guy credit. He knows what he's doing. So you got to say State there as much as it pains me. Trip to Virginia Tech on a Thursday night. Now, actually, last time Carolina played Virginia Tech at Blacksburg, they did win. So it's not out of the realm for Carolina to pull this one off, but I'm just not seeing it. And then Thanksgiving weekend against Duke and Chapel Hill. And if you can't beat Duke, I don't care how good Duke may or may not be. And Duke's probably not going to be all that great this year. Give Cutcliffe a couple more years, let him build a little bit more talent, a little bit more depth. Duke will start to have a fighting chance. Now Duke's going to be flirting with a winning season potentially because of a really soft schedule. But then again, as Pete Gillen said, Duke is Duke, and lay on TV more than leave it to Beaver reruns. But actually, when is the last time you saw the Beaver on TV? So, 
pretty much a, a repeat of previous seasons, an 8 and 4 campaign for the Heels, is how I'm projecting things. As for the NCAA investigation, well, that'll come down somewhere around the time of the Wake Forest game, if memory serves correctly. I believe uh, October 28th is a important date in that realm, so we'll have to see what happens with that and how that affects this team's mindset and its potential goals. But hey, football season's going to be back. Carolina went through a rough one. Certainly know it means open season on Tar Heel fans for uh, all their detractors. And Tar Heel sports have many. I think it's personally because of the relationship they've had with the media over the years and the fact they basically try to uh, big time everybody they talk to. And really, I mean, it's amazing how difficult it is to deal with the uh, Tar Heel Athletic Department. And I know personally from my experience in sports talk radio. Thanks again for listening in. I certainly hope the sound fidelity on this particular endeavor is much better than previous efforts. Have a good night. Late.